Yeah, the word of the Lord is here for you again and is a powerful message for you. And I want you to pay attention as the word of the Lord comes through his servant this hour. God bless you and subscribe to it. Here he Jesus climbs up the mountain. 5,000 people climb with him because there is a tragedy. Here For three days, they are up that mountain. He goes by the sea of Gennesaret and people. Nobody can lift himself. It is not given to men. You do not have the ability to promote yourself. It is not within your jurisdiction. Your assignment is to align yourself to be discerned and promoted. Could this be why we are here? Could this be why prophecies continue to come week after week? Let me tell you, it is difficult to... His honor will change you like Samson. Even if the person is obviously wrong, the show of honor, you talk about the person. He said, Look, just forget about it. I know it's true, but how do I say it now? There was a foolish man in the Bible who would have been at the wrath of a king except that he had a wise wife called Abigail. The woman quickly stepped in to preach the foolishness that the dishonor of that man caused. Could this be the reason why many families do not work? There is a lot of prayer and spirituality, but there are different versions of dishonor. Dishonor from the woman to her husband, dishonor to several things. I've shared this story and if you permit me to share it. A true story, I heard it somewhere many years ago. That there was a man of God and this man was having a serious crisis in his family. I think it had to do with maybe a financial crisis, things were not working. Yes, he was a pastor in a church just like this. And people would always come to testify. Pastor prayed for me and doors opened. Now I have a job, now I'm abroad and all of that. And things were, I mean, there was fire on the mountain in his own house. And then one time, a service was running like this. And his wife just got up and walked out of the church. Imagine what happens if her mother just gets up and walks out of it. You wonder what happened now. And then the man was touched. He finished the service, did his counseling very quickly, and reached for his house. And he went for oh, money. What is wrong? She never uttered a word. Please pay attention. He sat down at the table waiting for his meal. What is wrong? If I offended you, I'm sorry. We can talk about it. That is There's a section for it, it's not like the holy of holies. That way, it doesn't come out carelessly. And then the plates. And you know, the man was laughing as if we've been married for years. Let's not do this, children. Let me do it. She didn't say, Please listen. When she brought the last item that would be on the table, she now knelt down and looked at him. Her husband and the servant of God, my family is in trouble. Listen carefully. Because the anointing on that man continued to bless people who discerned that he was not just a man, that he was an anointed man. And the wife said, when they say, lift your hands, say, well, are you not my husband? What we quarreled this morning, I helped you with your bathing water. What is all this? Lift your hands again. And she was shocked that the church was rising, but their home was dying. And the woman like Esther said, I found the king. It is this honor that has been closing the door. Today, you are not my husband again. Today, you are a man of God. I remember my home must change. Hear me. Let me teach you this. There are many dimensions to every man you see. 
the dimension you honor is the one that brings its riches to you. Your brother is not only your brother. Your brother is also a prophet. He never prophesies to you because the only dimension you call is your brother. So you receive stories about how the family is doing back at home. That's a brother's reward. There are women that carry certain graces. Please listen to me. They never beg, quarter to shame. Something must arise and bail them out. You will never see them. It's a grace. They may not be educated, but there's something about their bowing their knees. It's like God covenanted with Himself. Whatever they did to God that made it to enter that covenant. And one day they'll say, I'll pray for you. I'll never pray for me. My pastor prayed. Nothing works. Talk more of you. And you remain there. Let me tell you the truth. Human beings are mysteriously, mysteriously strange. Just all you see is not all there is. I have come to the end of myself. In everyone seated here, there are untapped spiritual dimensions that if honor is engaged on our lives can change. There are many women who continue to pray for other people to have children, but their children have not seen a need to come. Mommy, I hope you are praying for us. Well, I will do my best. And five years, become seven years. The day that daughter comes and says, Mommy, this is a seed I want you for what? I have watched everyone you prayed for come with twins, triplets. I'm not meeting my mother. I'm meeting a woman with the grace that can terminate barrenness. Let me tell you the truth. That day, that day, it would no longer be as usual. For many years, I would not preach in my own state. I would preach in neighboring states. I didn't know why that happened. My own family, my own blood mother, things were not going as well. And one time my mother was very, very sad. And she was fed up. Every time I went to greet them at home, I didn't feel like a man of God again. It was as if the anointing would hang at the gate. As soon as I go out, I said, okay, come back, let's get back to work. Not because they were bad people. But one day my blood mother, biological mother, she now looked at me and said, my child, it has to be me. And my mother cried that day. And said, but you are blessing others and lifting the lives of others. And that day for the first time, that grace and that anointing, I felt that grace with all my heart. And I laid my hands on my own blood mother. And I said, okay, I stand in the name of Jesus. And I shift you to the dimension of Today I speak to you in the name of the Lord. People who do not know me find our family house in Joss and not the gate. Are you apostles' mothers? This is for you. Thank you for giving back to apostles. Please listen. If this teaching does not help you today, I don't know where we are going to start. Because this is a teaching that the results can be instant. Some of you, your results can be after this service. God is already showing you the person to truly go and honor. To go and say, look, we are colleagues. We graduated at the same time. But you have never been without a job for three months. When a company seems to throw you in three months, another one has come. What grace do you have? They are bros. Leave bros, please. I'm tired of roaming around like Cain in Lagos, a place of opportunity. Don't you know that this city has its riches? But there are people whose hands have never touched it. They were born and bred here. People come upon your soil and place a demand to honor and walk away with blessings. Who is God speaking to this woman? There are many pastors. Let me tell you this. I've shared with you, maybe I'll just say this and then we'll pray. I'm teaching on it. In 2004, Red Hat Bonke 
came to just for the crusade. I left Kaduna State and I went down because I desired the grace of God that man's life. I was already a man of God. I was already working in miracles. I was already ministering to people. How stupid would I be to imagine we are the same level? You never receive from a colleague. There is no transference from colleague to colleague. There has to be a spiritual potential difference. Someone has got to acknowledge and discern that Elijah, Elisha was never supposed to be a prophet. He was a farmer. But he decided to work with an angry man. If Elijah were your boss, you would know why the sons of the prophets were not happy people. That temperous man, you don't know what he will call today. Whether you will call fire or call whatever. And the sons of the prophet were obviously offended. But Elijah said, you can shout, oh, you don't know me, there's something I'm looking for. Listen, can you ignore the weakness in men to still get what they carry? Listen, let me teach you this. We're around you know. I know why we never receive from men, because they are ethnic. And unfortunately, you will want God to switch the anointing to something more desirable. And God in his economy will leave it there. Let me tell you, the secret of receiving from men to transit to another dimension is hidden in the riddle of Samson. When Samson, please listen, when Samson taught a lion on his way to go and see a lady, are we together now? He returned after seven days and he found a mystery. He found that there were trees in that place, but the bees did not go to put honey in the tree. They came and entered inside the carcass and put honey there. And so when Samson came, he was looking for the honey and the bees directed him inside a smelly carcass. And he gave a riddle. He said, out of something strong has come something sweet. Why will bees not go to trees and enter a smelly carcass? This is the mystery of how God stores possibilities. The vessels may be smelly, but can you endure the smell to get the honey? That's the price. Whoever told you anointed people are perfect in themselves? Were you not pre-told that the treasure is in heaven? Elijah is temperous, but ignore him and you will never carry the prophetic. Imagine a man following this harsh prophet. And he goes from Gilgal, Bethel, down to Jordan. And he says, so now talk to me, what are you looking for? Imagine that kind of thing, that you are following someone he should know. I mean, you would have said, have a prophet, don't you have brains? Where, where is your prophetic? When you are desperate for growth, anything is enjoyable. When you begin to complain about things, it's because you are not desperate enough for growth. Your boss may be an angry man, but one call from him can be used by God to change your life. Because you mismanaged his anger, he threw you out and you acted like it didn't matter. See now, it's five years. Five years. Everybody who can give you a job respects that same angry man. And when he hears they want to give you a job, he says, I told you to make that person angry. It's amazing how God watches people and still leaves those things there. They laughed at Moses and this man, you married a black Ethiopian woman. Are you the only one God will talk to? Moses kept quiet, but God said, I won't keep quiet. God came and said, what did I hear you say? Against Moses? Have I ever talked with you face to face? Do you think Moses is just a man? And the glory came and left his sister Miriam. You know Miriam was a prophetess. And she was wondering why God was not using her. And leprosy just came upon her. This honor is not only bad, it has side effects. Side effects that can be demonstrated in your lifetime. People can know that you are carrying this as a token of this honor. There are many ways to build your life. You can pay your way through in pain. Or you can honor your way through this strange list. I will never dishonor any man 
I will never dishonor any church. I will never dishonor any people. When we got to the airport, fresh, precious pastor, by the way, please let's, let's, um, I spotted, let's, let's honor her. Truly, really, practice it now. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Please sit down. It was such a gracious reception and my heart was gladdened and I said, boy, look at this. There are people you invite, they are surprised that you are not blessed. They wonder where they are not in. Your dishonor removed it from them and kept it at the door of the church. Ask Jesus. He enters the city. Is that the carpenter's son here? No wood for us today. And Jesus says, let's go out of this place. There is no, there is no point trying. They will not receive. Please hear me, young people. Your mother may be in the village. She never went to school. But do you know when she was small, her prophetess mother blessed her and said, whoever you open your mouth, even if it's in your mouth, your life will change. Please hear me. Can I give you one more story and then we'll pray? We didn't finish the Red Hat story. But let me just switch and talk to you about one that relates with you. You've heard it in my teachings. We were on our way to preach her in Ekiti. It would be my first time there. And so we had to fly to uh, Lorraine, the airport, and then we'd go by road. And so when we went, they received us and we were on our way going. And then I started watching the obituaries. Obituaries. And I would see 120 something years. 130 something years. I said, these people are joking. Call all these Guinness Book of Records to come to Nigeria. They say the oldest lesson is 114. Come to Nigeria where the mystery of longevity dwells. One something. And then I passed and I saw one. 132 years just died in Nigeria within your region. I noted it. I went to preach. When I was done preaching and we returned, I was passing. God is my witness. And then I saw one, 145 years. And then I went back to the 132. It was like a senior apostle who just, who just died. And then I said, I told the driver, stop. There is a grace for long life here. Instead of taking the risk and a plane will crash me tomorrow. Now I'm not I'm not being sarcastic. Every possibility is secure through understanding. Grace is a transfer. Many of the graces you ask for left heaven. You don't just know how to bring your portion to you. I would have said I'm a man of God, I've spoken long life for you. I'm too young to think that I plan to live here for a long time. There is there is, there is work to do for the kingdom. Please listen. And I don't speak Yoruba. And the man there now, he, he doesn't seem to speak English, but it's like a Christian community, small community. I said, no, there has to be a way out of London. I stopped, I packed this car to receive something solid. Eventually, we found someone who could speak limited English. And I said, okay, we are men of God. We came to receive the grace for long life. Who is the oldest man in this place? He must pray for us before we leave. And then eventually they interpreted it as they told us to go and meet one old man. And we entered the room, I was talking, then you will interpret. Watch what happened to us. I would speak and then you will interpret. The room. And we said, we are here to receive the grace for a long time. I thought the man said, no, we don't have that grace. He laughed. He said, kneel down. I cannot know this on my own unless you take go. I'll never know this by myself unless you take go. Listen, that man said, he didn't ask, are you a man of God? Are you the one they call Apostle Joshua Selman? That's nonsense. When it has to do with me, with, with reception, you remove your crown. It's not only worship that demands removing your crown, receive it also. He said, kneel down. I knelt down quietly. 
And the man started praying in Yoruba. Quite honestly, I was not interested in what he was saying. All I know was that it's a law. All not is a law. There is no gate it will not open. I come from the north. There are kings here. I said I must transport this grace to The moment she was praying, I felt like a crown. Just in front of my head. And when we were done praying, then I appreciated him, packaged the sheep and gave him. And then I went out, uh, we were to enter the car, then I saw some women standing there. And then I said, let me go and thank them, they were the first people we contacted. And I went there and I said, you know, Mama, they were interpreting just to say thank you. And they said, you see this man who is 132 years, this is his wife, so like 120 something, standing, no stick. I said, let's go back. Let's go back. No, we have to go back. Behind every glory, there is a story. Of. Let's go back. Two have become one. If the man has died, he's still alive. I thought that she was the wife of his old age, like Ketura. But this is the one and only wife. The man died one thirty-two, and then when they told her she laughed, she tapped me and follow me. Then she opened a room, and I started seeing the pictures from those times where they did um, camera inside or whatever. You touch it, it will stain and remain there forever. I started seeing the pictures together. The wife of his children. What did they know? That the arrows that fly by day that the noisome pestilence what did they know what did god do for them so you can go to god in prayer and say god give me long life and he said i'm giving it he's not lying it is within your territory use honor like a magnet and draw it to you every possibility you pray for is already in lagos here it is the discernment the discernment those people live as if they are not in Nigeria. Out of my, from my father's side, the only person alive is my father. Is that not a risk to not tap into this kind of grace? And then I told her, I said, Ma, we honor you for who we represent. Please forget the fact that we are men of God. I want you to give me the blessing of a mother and the blessing that was upon this man. And the woman said, kneel down and she removed her shoes. I don't know about you, but when a woman takes off her shoes to stand on bare ground, you better start rejoicing. She took off her shoes and for 15 minutes, she even started with a song. First, before she started blessing me, when she finished, ask my people, wherever we are traveling to, whether the plane is going round and round, I'm sleeping on Many scriptures, it's true that he keeps them in perfect peace, but that the same grace, listen, you know possibilities by the results they produce. If they are not captured in your life, the grace is not yet there. We are going to pray. We are going to do a reimpartation of grace because someone has, has, has been the answer to your prayer for a long time. Everything you are saying God should give you, God gave the person shoes. And regardless what is happening in Nigeria, that person, whether finance or whatever, doesn't go down. There is a grace that is capable from honor. This is what Esther. She honored Mordecai, honored her way to the palace. Please hear me. In this conference, the Lord is speaking to us by the Spirit. Honor is a weak one. It is not always the sword that wins. Sometimes you need to drop the sword and use the weapon. Women, God is speaking to you. It is not always the sword. Deborah was a warrior, but she never sat on the throne. Ask Esther how we now sit on the throne. Ask Esther how to replace Vashti. When you do what Vashti did, you will follow her ways. 
But she said, no, I'm too proud to honor you. She forgot that she was queen only because a king married her. It's why we stand here and we acknowledge him. Regardless of what people say, I will never make the mistake of Vashti. Because every man is a woman in the state. And if you ignore your husband and carve out a niche for yourself, then you are out of that palace. When it was time I will be teaching you, oh please don't miss me. Whatever sacrifice you will make, we will, we will open this book of Esther and God will show you something. Esther comes to the king, let me give you a preview. And he said, Esther, what can I be? Even if it's to half of my kingdom, I will give you. Esther would have said, that's it. Give me the kingdom, the part where the Jews are, where they want to kill them. Just give it to me quickly. That would have been a wise strategy. But let me show you what honor does. He says, oh king, all I want to do is to show you how great you are. I have put a banquet, a woman under fire. There is a threat happening. And the king says, what is wrong? She says, nothing. I only came to honor you. And I want her man to be there. So honor can kill. That's how she killed a man. You honor an enemy to death. Did you ever learn that honor is a weapon of mass destruction? I want Haman to participate in that honor. Haman comes foolishly, goes to tell his household, I don't know what is going on. I'm not only exalted, I'm, I was specially chosen to eat with the king. And then she flaunts the king's glory. And then the king said, No, there is a catch to this. My wife, for you now, is yours. What do you want? She says, Let it please the king that I repeat this again. King, can I do this again? And the king said, Why, she, why didn't you do this? You would have remained in the palace. This is all I wanted. Oh foolish Vashti, it's not only Galatians that were foolish, the foolishness started from Vashti. And I hope it ended with the Galatians. May it never, never be all oh, foolish me. Whoever told you honor was for weak people. Women, whoever told you, arguing and shouting with the man and saying, you don't know you, you go and find out silly and pissiness. You just innocently married me. You, you will soon know that just because many times the sword does not mean. The sword may injure, but it may not bring victory. There are times you don't need injury, you need victory. If a war is not needed, keep your sword. Not every victory needs war. If you don't have to fight, let honor lift you above the challenge. Is God giving us this And she takes the king and blesses him again. Then there was a particular feast she now organized. It was called the feast of wine. That was when she made her request. Not when there was food. She said, King, drink the wine. I serve this wine. Something happens when you are full of wine. I will show you tomorrow. Are we together? I, look, let me tell you. Yours is to play your own part and watch the power of God's voice. They will shift things. Shift things. It will be like you are holding a child. God, what are you doing? Some of you, you need to practice this. That tomorrow you buy wine and a gift pack and take it to the department where someone vowed that you buy you. You don't leave this job. Except I didn't come here before. And you give me a gift and say, I'm just here to honor you. And ignorant people will say, Oh, foolish you. That's why they keep talking. Honor is a sword, it can kill. You can honor people down while you rise. Haman 
was honored to the gallows that he built. She never fought her man once. She said, let her man also be in the seats. We are praying. Her man sat down foolishly and while he was eating, he did not know death had come. What is now your request? And she said, my life and that of my people are being threatened. He said, by whom? He says, the enemy is this wicked her man. The king lives for a while and goes to his garden. That's what every good man should do when you're under pressure. Don't talk. Be silent. Go out of that place and be risen with wisdom. Then return. And look at this. He now fell on the bed where Esther was to beg her. You see, but when God wants to make nonsense out of your enemies, their good can be evil spoken of. The king just entered when she was begging and said, It's not enough that you want to kill my people. You now want to rape my wife. And then as soon as he said that, one of the king's men said, Sir, for your information, there is a gallow that was built. Who asked him? If maybe they would have just killed him. But if And the king said, Go and hang him. We are going to pray. Listen to me. Every consistent result has come from the sacrifice that a man has paid with God in the secret, with the spirit of understanding. Woe betides a man who ignores greatness when he sees. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed. The less is not the weak one, the less is the one in need. I've had the opportunity many times to be at the redemption camp and to pass this. There are people in this 
Jesus, who have been marvelously helped like Messiah by God, by God's grace, finances of the God. But you stand today wondering how will tomorrow be financially. It is good that you have learned all the business principles, it is good that you have learned all the investment principles. But do you have the discernment to say, no, there is a grace? There are people way before they knew what they were doing, they were already prospering in that area because they were under a grace. Something we have ignored has begged us in this nation. And we are going to pray and cry for the next two or three days. Everybody, you are going to be alone with God and your destiny. For your family, for your children. If you have nothing to pray for for yourself, you have to pray for someone you love. Father, I love you. The palace was full of every other thing, but without dishonor, it was about to divide. I pray in tongues. I'm a man of God. I have revelation, but every door is shut towards me. Now I see that there are doors only honor can open. There are doors. Mother says God speaking to us. You are crying that God will touch your children. Look what He has done to children in this church. There are children who have written who have risen with flawless track records. Never done anything twice in their life. My crown before pray the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. Undone before your glorious majesty, you're the King of kings and Lord of lords, you are the King of kings, you're the King of kings and Lord of lords, your glorious majesty. Just a few minutes and we're done. Lord is doing a work in our lives. Honor. The mystery behind the strange rising of people. Alabarus Katabrandi.
I understand the mystery behind the closed doors in my life now. That in spite the opportunities that once opened, listen, if a door ever opened and is now closed, it's on or closed it. And no matter who you are, there are many music artists in this nation, doors open and dishonor shut them out of it. There are many preachers that doors opened and dishonor shut them out of it. Many business people, you were granted access to stairs and circles. Dishonor shut you out. Cry to the God of heaven, the restorer of times and seasons. It says the sons of Issachar who had an understanding of the time, they knew what Israel ought to do. Man of God, are you praying? Like the hair of Samson, Lord, I cry for a restoration. Let the doors be opened once again. Let the doors to my music ministry be opened once again. Let the doors to my ministry be opened once again. Let the doors to the storehouse of my destiny be opened once again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are going to ask the Lord for grace to discern who is deserving of honor. They may not come in forms that you will see and appreciate we live in a society where we are obsessed with scanning things from the vistas of society the sociology within us the greatest things in your life will not come in forms that you will appreciate you will need discernment lord grant me discernment to see the graces to see the individuals and the sacrifices they are men but they are lift they can lift you they are men, but they are spiritual systems that can carry you to untold dimensions. They don't have to be men and women of God in ministry. They have to be men and women who are carrying something divine and something powerful. Few minutes we are praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Honor, heartfelt, sincere, truthful, unbiased, genuine from your heart. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. When you honor people, just because you suspect there is something in them you can have, is important. Honor is a culture that must be true. I know you have the fortitude for honor when I see what you do with people who have nothing to give you. Honor is a culture that is too contagious to exempt anybody. If that spirit is upon you, you will honor the mighty and the low at the same time. 